Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another recording of MTG Arena. Today is Wednesday, November the 13th, and we're going to try to get this daily quest done. Actually, I could do this while still playing standard, because uh, I'm doing fun. But the one thing I do want to do is edit this deck. One thing that's becoming more apparent to me is that there needs to be at least one or two cards in a white blue deck in this case that will destroy a target artifact or enchantment um, let's see this top of the statue would cost three mana probably fine compared to this which would only target artifacts or enchantment this gives you a little bit more options um, destroy all non-giant uh, creatures hmm. so I think what we probably will want is this one unless there's something very specific in the blue category that would be playable Let's see no, it doesn't look like there's anything there. This is mostly a blue deck with some just a little bit of white cards in it. Hmm. You know, playing Magic the Gathering, frankly, it does does kind of the way you just say blue, black, and white so often. It does kind of sound like you're saying something racist half the time. Um, you know what, I'm going to just take both of these, and then I'm going to come through here, let's see, a 2 mana to get a boost is probably not that useful, surveillings and probably not that useful, hmm. this was mostly a flying deck, um, deck definitely was one card though. Hit that I saw. I think it was in this deck. Maybe it was in a different deck. Yeah, it might have been. Draw two cards, discard a card. That's not super useful, but kind of useful. Hmm. Another card. Creatures getting plus one, plus one. Tap creatures. Can we get more of those? We don't have any more. Hmm. Discarded cards. Surveil. Alright, we need to get rid of two things then. Mm -mm. So we'll get rid of that. Take one of these. I think those are better. And get rid of that, and then that just again puts me where I need to get rid of something. Hmm. We'll get rid of one of these air elementals. There you go. Slight tweak, and our hover is still not working. And we'll just keep on trying standard ranked. Seems like probably straight till the end of this month we will uh, end up staying right at the bottom of gold rank. Eh. Unless I put in a bunch of effort off screen and, and just play probably with my black deck a lot. Um, so I'm going to mulligan in the hopes that I get that. But that still didn't really work for me so... That kind of sucks. Um, what I wanted to do is have a full white plane and this in my hand. And that didn't happen. So we play this first getting some gross swamp sound effects and I think we'll be trying 
today to to go for further and accomplish more as far as covering the news so i'm going to jump into the news right now and we're going to try and just burn through all of it because the last couple of streams I have been just two episode streams, but then I spend 10 minutes at the end covering all the news, um, which is not particularly how I would want it to go. So we have a game on Steam here called Derpy Pirates, which looks like it is a platformer infinite runner game. Probably a lot of asset flips, low polygon. It's twelve dollars and seventy nine cents discounted, which is way too expensive. It says as English full audio. Yeah, nothing there that that makes that something I'd want to play. All right. Well, this guy does. This guy have reach? No. So we're kind of fine. This can just be a face race. He can attack me all he wants, and I'll attack him all I want, and I'll do one more damage. At least at the moment. Uh, TechRaptor has an article here Dungeons and Dragons Sapphire Anniversary Dice Set celebrates 25 years in style. Now, this is a board game. Uh, uh, this is a board game mention, but I think the fact that Dungeons and Dragons Sapphire Anniversary is occurring has some uh, some relevance. Like 25 years of of Dungeons and Dragons means which Dungeons and Dragons definitely heavily influenced the way a lot of video games were created for a very long time. Even now, they it still probably has some influence. So th there's a little bit of history there. Um, of course, if you'd asked me last week how how long Dungeons and Dragons has been out. I would be very unlikely to have guessed 25 years. Right. This guy is trying to overpower me, but I don't think he can. Not with the cards he has. He's playing a bunch of adventure cards. But they, these are all going to untap next turn. It's only this one that won't untap. So there we go. Got a victory. If we could chain a victory up, we would get a couple of pips per victory and maybe get to rank 3. But you can r drop back down from rank 3 to rank 4. So the reward actually showed us a reward last time it didn't. And we still don't have the hover. So we don't really know how much XP we need or have. Uh, Tech Raptor has an article. After a very long time, Wadham finally gets a release date. Wadham being uh, some game I've completely forgotten about. It was apparently announced back in 2014. It looks like it's kind of a Kanamari Damashi inspired style game but if it doesn't have any real relationship to Kanamari Damashi then I don't know why I would specifically try and play it um, let's see let's get rid of that And it getting a release date is hardly any real news because, yeah, there's, you, you still would need, need it to come out and be reviewed before you had any realistic reason why you would expect it to be something you'd want to play. Uh, let's see. 
Game of Sutra has an article, get a job, join Evening Star as a gameplay programmer. This is in LA, California. It's hard to take a job in, in, in California right now with potentially the entire, um, in the entire place burning to the ground. Creatures, spells with flying, you cast cost one less. So why was that not free then? That, that's my question is, well, why was that not free? Should, can you not reduce something down to, uh, to zero mana? Does something always have to cost mana? If that's a rule, I'd like to see it written down. In fact, I'd like to read the rules the in general from Magic enemies. the Gathering. Because oh. there's clearly Perfect. stuff I don't know. Effective. So, what would the target mana cost for this be? Hmm. I don't know what the converted cost on this is. It doesn't have a converted cost. Hmm. So it seems like it could probably just next turn, if I can't do anything else, do this and just use all my mana. Smelly, but effective. Uh, Tech Raptor has an article here. Jedi Fallen Order EA Access members won't get early access. So. Uh, they're saying they want to avoid spoilers that this probably means the game is not finished um, and they need that extra time if I was to guess or that they know that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is not going to be particularly that good. I didn't really think that it was like so far I haven't seen anything that would imply to me that it's particularly good. Um, So, seriously, I'm just gonna destroy everything I've got. Um, so yeah, there, rise and shine. I I hope I would like to see Star Wars games succeed. So I, I hope I'm wrong about this, but I wouldn't be surprised if if it really is a a case of of them them not really uh, having a good game there. I, I wouldn't be surprised though. It's like half the Star Wars games I've seen don't really seem that good. This guy is just exiling every card I have. Does it? Does this Planeswalker do anything with? Uh, Exile cards? No. So if he if he has some strategy, I I don't know what it is. Rise. Hmm. Like how many more of these cards could he possibly have? Hmm. And we've got this in case but we are quickly running out of life and running out of things to do let's see does the guy stop playing kind of feels like the whole game pauses I guess if the music's playing the game didn't crash at least so Second dinner, the person, the company started by Ben Broad, who used to run Hearthstone, has some job listings now. So they're, they're hiring up for this Marvel card game that they are working on. So they're looking for a comic style colorist, freelance job, and a 2D illustrators 
freelance job in the Irvine, California area, although I'm not sure you really would need to be in that area for, for freelance jobs of those sorts. Um, if I was just a guess, uh, that probably isn't as big of a deal as uh, to commute to. Oh man. Well, I'm gonna lose, so. We have four. Apparently we can't do that. Three. Two. One. Zero. Okay, so you can send these guys back for zero. But then sending that back for zero creates zero characters. <laughs> so that that was pointless other than it just listen to my symphony of death. Choose a permanent they control and sacrifices the rest. Um, so I'm going to hold on to my white land. <laughs> this will be child's play. Is this You're not well good for you. <laughs> I'm going to make myself scarce. Hmm. I think I'm doomed. If I was just gonna guess, I think I'm doomed. Uh, so I, I put out a comic book. I, I mentioned this on Twitter the second dinner. My 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 fantasy comic book creator, who would almost certainly never be allowed to work on this project because a they work for DC, not Marvel, and B, which may not be as big of a, a problem as it seems, but uh, but B, From they also the are grave. most fun, famously known for creating the yeah, adult like comic series toy. Sunstone, which is a relationship series between uh, generally two. Uh, the, the first chapter, at least, the first section, the big first volume, uh, is two, two lesbians uh, who are heavy into exhibitionist bondage. Uh, and while it is not just straight up porn, it does not shy away from showing the occasional T and A and P and V, I suppose, would be the. Kill 25 of your opponent's creatures. I am not accomplishing that at all. Well, now that we don't need to play that anymore, I'm going back to my blue deck, I guess. Where's my green deck? Let's let's see. Let, let's try the green deck. I haven't played that in a while. Um, so, be, being that that this person who I can't really pronounce their name uh, on Twitter is Steven like Stepeknik or something like that uh, Stepnik or something something along that line I, I believe <sighs> yeah doubtful they would get the job but it would be amazing if they did <laughs> uh, although in all fairness if I was to look at the animation styles that that you would want for a Marvel card game I could see quality being more of a focus than than art style or consistency uh, in comparison I would say that um, the 
the art style for these cards, which a lot of different people have made the art for, for Magic things, but they all stick with a pretty consistent uh, Tolkien-esque fantasy art style that often is a little too complicated, a little too much of a color palette for the small window. Uh, so uh, I would kind of like to see something closer to I think some of the Hearthstone animations. On the other hand, if they are going to depict everything as a full window image, like this skin, if they made everything look like that in the card game, that would be great. Uh, but that's not how it gets depicted. Yeah, in a weird way, I, I kind of do feel like the... Uh, I feel like the card game arena should consider consider getting rid of the everything except for the best skins, uh, just so it visually is easier to identify things. Having all these different skins is not going to be any make it easy for a new player to recognize a card when they see it. So this one has vigilance and trample. And I could put this to give it a 3-3, but it'd still die. So... I need to keep on playing. Meanwhile, this guy's gonna kill me before anything happens. play this. So now that we have two characters, we can block, but that's kind of it. Hmm. So n now if he doesn't do something, which he did, enough to do this no if you still have a home you should go there now mm -hmm. Yep, that's a quick, quick loss for me, but whatever. Moving on, we've got a story here from Gamma Sutra. The sunk cost fallacy. Devs describe how it almost destroyed them. Uh, the sunk cost fallacy is a problem that I think happens almost in everybody's life all the time. People get so invested in something they're working on that they, they continue to invest more and more into it instead of just giving up. Uh, particularly in the United States, it's there's always been this never give up, never surrender mentality. Um, giving up and surrendering in many situations might be the exact right move. Uh, this is going to be the last ranked game I play. <laughs> like I, I think going forward on these streams we're going to try like one ranked game and then that's kind of it because um, if I'm going to have any variety in the decks I play, which I need to, I need to get more familiar with the different colored decks, um, I'm going to have to show those decks off playing in regular play mode and thus not, uh, not trying to get wins. Because if I was just trying to get wins in ranked play, I would do that specifically by... Uh, by playing just the black deck, which is the only deck that seems to win at all right now. And 
Yeah, we probably should consider another deck rebuild already. Like, let's see. But uh, I'm not really ready for that to happen. Hmm. Let's see. Vigilance. So, is there anything in this article that specifically would address the sunk cost policy? Maybe, if you're interesting. Just been looking at. So, next attack, attack here, next, all right, now we play this on this, and that should win just fine, we'll hold on to this for later. And while we're at it, we'll sacrifice truth since we don't need that much mana. Hmm. Yeah, this was a actually rather long uh, article for G Gamatsu or Gamma Sutra, uh, but it is just kind of getting clips and and I think each paragraph is probably part of an interview from a different company and talking about how they they ran into problems now see this would be a great point to mention that if I had put in a card to destroy an artifact that would be useful but I didn't so whatever. Do I just not have a white? I guess I don't, so I can't play anything yet. We should be fine. Should be fine the way in here. Uh, Tech Raptor has an article here. Debut of the GTA Online Casino and that's record real world profits. So, uh, yeah. Probably a surprise to nobody that putting in gambling mechanics into video games. Actual gambling mechanics. Despite the fact that it gets you terrible press coverage. Still makes you a ton of money. And that's all they really care about. Hmm. Let's see. So, yeah, they did it anyways. Speaking of doing it anyways, uh, TubeBuddy, which is the plugin for... YouTube, which I guess I'm having a increasingly less use of as since I've just started using the Uploader software. Hopefully the Uploader software still works after this new update. Um, is he not gonna defend with this? Yes, he is gonna defend with this. Good.
Well, we shouldn't quit on a... We shouldn't quit on a victory. That would be dumb. Let's quit on a loss. So, TubeBuddy on their Twitter has this video, $42,530 fine per video uh, for the them not following Copa. I don't think that really works. Um, but here is the video. Uh, there was something about this lady too. She She's not a typical person that posts on the YouTube channel. And a lot of YouTube creators don't watch the YouTube channel. So they're, they're trying very hard to get these kind of videos in front of the face of everybody. But there was something with her teeth or the way she talked. I can't remember, but it, she, she was a little bit off there. In general, it might have just been that she's also reading off a very strictly regulated script and and could not diverge in any way. Uh, yeah, I, if YouTube really did get fined $42,000 per video, unless this was a case of like 12 videos, they're almost certainly going to appeal that and never pay it. Um, if that, that, that would bankrupt YouTube and... It, and well, I guess if bank, if YouTube got bankrupt, then that would be crazy. Um, but it, it is definitely a mention of how YouTube needs to get their um, stuff together and and be way more reactants to comply with laws and not just kind of do whatever they want to do and think they can get away with it forever. Uh, which I feel like was you are not worthy. exactly what they were trying to do. It was just they, they felt they were abo above the law. Uh, moving on, Gamatsu has an article, the Adlier Dusk Trilogy Deluxe you. Pack second trailer is out, which this is not the new Adlier Ryza game, it's the older series is being resold, so this would be Adlier Aisha, the Alchemist of Dusk, Adlier Esha and Logi, Alchemist of Dust, Sky DX, and Adlier uh, Alchemist of the Dusk C DX. These are clearly DX games. Um, and by the animation on them, you can kind of see that too. Yep. It's it's it was really surprising to to hear and find out that there were so many Atlier games out there, and I had just never heard of any of them. But I would imagine Atlier Ryza is the one I would want to play. Uh, First and probably only. Uh, let's do no attacks. Just because we can attack doesn't mean we need to. Um, it is also worth mentioning that it that I heard a rumor, and I can't really confirm it with an article that either Atlier Ryza or one of the Atlier games was denied classification in Australia. Australia getting worse and worse it seems by the day about not approving video games. I mean, they they'd been pretty bad Hazard, in the first place. What? I guess I couldn't defend because that was a flying creature. Hmm. Guess we'll just go ahead and attack. Hmm. Um Particularly, I think Australia is, is is targeting Japanese material of all sorts. Uh, so Japanese games, movie, anime, manga, all of that um, as stuff that they just don't want in their country. Uh, they're they're basically doing a slow conservative. Uh, 
trade war. I don't, I don't even think it's a trade war. I, I think it is, it is just a censorship thing. Um, I don't think if you threw enough money at the problem it would solve anything. Let's see, auto pay. How does this card work again? Hmm. So, yeah. I'm certainly glad I don't control... Uh, I don't live in... In Australia. I'd, I'd be fine to control Australia. If they want to name me their new king, uh, I'll take that position, but yeah, I'm glad I don't live there uh, for many reasons. Spiders and koalas being two. Uh, moving on, uh, for the Switch, the Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix has a t shirt pattern edit feature, which I assume means that you can create your own t-shirts with pins and erasers. Okay, cool. Um, probably not going to be that interesting or used, if I was to guess. Okay, so, whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell, um, this fights a creature you don't control. Alright, so what I want to do is no, not play that, so I guess I want to do this, and then I guess I want to do this, and then go ahead and just kill that. And I think he just conceded there. I don't think I lost. Now we've got two victories, so again, it would be silly to to stop playing on a lot on a win. So we'll chase the victories. Uh, Gamatsu has an article here for the Famitsu review scores, issue sixteen fifteen. So we have Dark Devotion for the PS4 and Switch getting a 27 out of 40, so it's not that good. Demo Reborn for the PS4, 32 out of 40. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, 36 out of 40. They actually liked it. Mononoke Slash Down, 27 out of 40. Uh, not very good. Mutant Year Zero Road to the Eden Deluxe Edition, 31 out of 40. Stay Cool, Kobayashi San, the River City Ransom Story. 27 out of 40, not that good. Super Dodgeball Beats, 29 out of 40. You died, but a necromancer revived you for the Switch, 28 out of 40. So a pretty low amount of scores that are, so not very good games came out this week. But there's bigger story with Famitsu. Um, the Japanese audience seems to now be questioning, and I think there is some legitimacy to question why Famitsu gave a 40 out of 40 out of Death Stranding. Uh, I thought that perhaps the, and I, I still think to a certain extent this is true. I, I think that Death Stranding speaks to a Japanese audience better than it does a um, a Western audience. and it, That would just make sense uh, with Hideo Kojima being in charge of it and, and making that game but what's being thrown around and there's evidence to this is the fact that the former person in charge of Famitsu appears as a as a, a easter egg in Death Stranding current employees of Famitsu appear in, as easter eggs in Death Stranding uh, this is the old system of 
video game companies buttering up video game critics by putting them in the game so they have some kind of an investment. Now, this is kind of the problem with the lack of ethics in games journalism, which it's been a long time since I've had to say use that phrase, but it, it's right there. And it's really not on the game developers to say, no, we won't allow a video games journalist to appear as an Easter egg or do voice acting or, or in some other way be entangled or profit from or invested into video game. Uh, more than as a reviewer and a casual consumer. Um, that's really not on the game's developers. That's on the video game journalist. And for Mitsu, which I cannot go back and deny that I haven't said this, is the most respected video games journalist uh, journalism site. And even they are showing here an incredible lack of ethics that they should not, uh, former employees, former owners of Famitsu should not be showing up in this game. Uh, current employees definitely should not be. Uh, once you become a video game critic, I've said it before, you, you kind of can never work in the video game industry. It, otherwise, you just run into that same scenario that everybody hates where a lobby, a politician passes a law to benefit a company and then that company hires them as a lobbyist as soon as their their term is up uh, it's just pay for play oh, well I don't know if that's really what that phrase is for but it's the same uh, same garbage we've seen over and over again uh, and same thing we don't want to see ever so, yeah, honestly, as I've seen more and seen more reviews, while I think some of the reviews for Death Stranding are highly wrong and, and in part, uh, invalid, uh, which I suppose might just boil down to a matter of opinion, I think Famitsu would have been fine to give it a 36, 37, even 38. Uh, but the, those extra two points, uh, I don't think it deserves it there. Uh, it Saying that it is potentially one of the 26 best games to ever exist is ridiculous. Uh, which Famitsu has only given out 26 perfect scores. Um, because, let's face it, Death Stranding is repetitive. In its gameplay mechanic it doesn't have a very interesting gameplay mechanic in the first place because you're just mo moving things from point A to point B um, we've seen better games out there than Death Stranding I would totally want to play Borderlands more than I would want to play uh, Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, Borderlands 3, take your pick I totally want to play um, Play that more than than Death Stranding. So yeah, it, it almost is is an admission that this is the sad day. This is the point where we have to say that all video game journalism has completely died uh, with 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 the Death Stranding reviews. Uh, Because you can't really trust any of them. I think I'll, I'm going to properly lose here. The Blade Runner game is now playable on, let's see, we can show this off. The Blade Runner game is now playable on Lib Retro, RetroArch, um, through the ScumVM engine, which I did not realize the Blade Runner game 
had 3D graphics, I thought it would have been a 2D game. Uh, it doesn't really matter though. Like, so, yep. More and more games being added to the Scum VM lineup in particular. Um, yeah. And we've kind of already talked about that, so this, there's nothing more to say than then that they updated the version of the scum vm core so they the updated version of scum vm which doesn't really require libretto uh, but i think works perfectly fine with it either way uh, and now supports more games and that's going to be more true for let's see what does this need a black So, the only thing I can do here is make a black. So then I could do this. So I could destroy this. Hmm. I've got too many spells and not enough creatures. I shouldn't, shouldn't be in this situation. So on a defeat, we will we will leave as that and just move over to play mode. And I want to test out this this one. Yep. I think a slight adjustment could be done off screen. So just make sure I have. At least one card that destroys an artifact or enchantment always. That's just a core base thing. Hmm. Let's mulligan that. And still not really great, but I think this is what we're playing for. I don't even know what I'm really playing for. And maybe Steam is down, so maybe we'll have no way of covering the rest of the news. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Mr. Pumpkin 2 Kowoon Walled City, which I think is probably some weird, like, Chinese point and click adventure, if I was to guess. It's nine dollars and 99 cents let's see there's a mr pumpkin adventure on my wish list it is chinese let's go and look at this and see what the reviews are it says it's very positive hmm And the other game here is called Little Triangle. I'm still waiting for the other guy to play. Eh, nothing here looks that interesting. So, am I willing to play a weird, weird point-and-click adventure? You know what? I can put this on the follow list, on the wish list, because it kind of just doesn't matter. Like, if I don't buy the first game ever, uh, whatever. So you're, you're kind of in a weird position because if I put this on the follow list, I might not promote it to the wish list. But then if I probably should put it on the wish list, so I'm just going to put it on the wish list. And we'll, we'll see. And then I might do a wish list cleanup at some point and, and decide to remove a lot of these things. I'm gonna 
get rid of that. Yeah. I think I may already have a victory because I think this guy's not going to play. Gamma Sutra has an article here. Google plans to roll out Stadia features weekly after a bare bones November 19th launch. Uh, we always start with nailing the key user journey, then proceed on releasing extra features. YouTube started with the watch video uh, for Stadia. It's play the game on your biggest screen. So, so they're promising more after a very disappointing launch lineup, to say the least. Um, but I, I haven't heard anybody say anything positive about this. So here's a great example of just how long it takes for somebody to not play before the game auto concedes. Which, in fairness, compared to Hearthstone, that's way, way shorter <laughs> than what it takes in Hearthstone. But it's still really, really short. Um... So, maybe somebody will play this game, maybe not. Kind of doesn't matter. I'm perfectly fine with going 14 more games of people not playing, getting the 15 wins and being done for the day. Um, so I could get back to playing Fear. See, the crazy thing is I'm going to have to call another electrician, which means there's going to be yet another day in which I'm not getting it work done uh, and ideally I need to get this electrical wires pulled or these not electrical wires but video wires pulled be before it starts getting hot again out of the winter season and and if it doesn't happen I'm just gonna give up on installing it until fall and winter next year Let's see. Uh, moving on, Gamma Sutra has an article. Voodoo opens a Canadian studio to expand beyond its hyper casual market. I have no idea who Voodoo is, though they're apparently a mobile game maker. Yeah. What's funny is that if I was to kind of focus on uh, or talk about all the mobile game makers of 2018 at the end of 2018 and then do the exact same thing for 2019 probably would say the exact same thing which is there's nothing to say like video mobile video game makers have not done anything really to to put out a game of the year type product or anything of real interest uh the only game I'm playing on my phone that I even would bother to mention at this point is Destiny Child. And I believe that is pretty much, yeah, that, that's the only game I'm even playing. I, I got rid of Clash Royale. I, I got rid of uh, Town Adventure or Adventure Town. I got rid of Klepto Cats 1 and 2. That. There's a game called Sandwich that I played just because I thought it was a funny concept. Uh, but that's it. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what I want to get rid of, but I'm going to have to discard something. get rid of that I guess um, so here's one of those stories I was talking about where you're just gonna have to put the history in with the story Tech Raptor has this article Mercy's recall challenge puts the spotlight on Dr. Ziegler 
This is a Overwatch event. Overwatch is owned by Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard uh, is pro censorship, and uh, John Bomb had an interesting spin on it, where one of the like vice presidents of Blizzard said that they did not like the censorship of. Uh, he he publicly said he didn't like the censorship and the the six months suspension now of Blitzchung. But then he he. Uh, Jeff on Giant Mom, I believe, pointed out, well, maybe this is the company letting him come out and disagree with them so it muddies the water. Uh, and if that was the case, that would be, like, a quite sneaky, manipulative move. But it's very possible, come to think of it, yeah. Uh, the main guy in charge says that we're not, we're, we're not changing it. The, the suspension is staying... Uh, blah 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 we, we were right uh, and then you have somebody who's below him disagree with him so it seems like there's uh this dissension in the ranks when there really isn't um. so that's an interesting thought but it, it really doesn't have anything to do with this story this story is yes there's a Overwatch thing. Blizzard is pushing out quite a lot of uh, stuff to try and get people to forget about all the bad things Activision Blizzard has done in the past few years. And, and hopefully the video game audience isn't so flippant and, and forgetful that they will get away with that. But unfortunately it might, it might work too. Let's be honest. Let's see. So this is interesting from a understanding perspective that I don't think YouTube Gaming has. So YouTube Gaming tweets out, We can't think of a reason why Jesse Cox would be biased towards a game that stars a redhead named Jesse. Jesse Cox being a redheaded male uh, that has a name Jesse. The character in Control has a red is a red-headed character named Jesse. Now, the funny thing about them giving a shout out and linking to his video is Jesse Cox really shouldn't be the front face of YouTube gaming in any way. Uh, in particular, this video is the uh, video game for the Distinguished Gentleman or Reviews for the Distinguished Gentleman video which is his new effort that started as an April Fool's joke where he literally posted onto uh, Pornhub him and another uh, YouTuber reviewing an old uh, an old anime hentai porn so that's they, they I think quickly found that no you can't post almost the entirety of the porn he, he really did just post almost the entirety of it uh, scene for scene on, on the porn hub um, no you can't do that and try to make money and try to make that a business that that actually would in any way succeed um, this one doesn't have flying so just say no attacks there um, so then they, 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 they were going to continue down that path, and I don't know if maybe they still are doing that behind some kind of Patreon or something. Um, but then they've expanded it to now be two guys just reviewing video games, which also doesn't really make sense because Jesse Cox has said very vocally and very loudly that it's not worth his time to review video games. And so he's not really being a video game critic or reviewer by his own admission. Instead, he's just being a live streamer, which, I mean, whatever. There's a lot of people out there doing that, and you're not going to get the copyright protections doing that. 
Um, I think this deck is very good. By the looks of it. So yeah, th th there's just like a lot of weirdness there. It feels like he also is probably getting somewhat paid or invested to to promote control, uh, which I don't know really if there is. There's a redheaded female actress in that looks like they've made new footage in particular for and so it feels like they, they worked directly with the creators of control um, so yeah and, and yeah i get it he liked control a lot of people like control i thought i kind of hated it in the long run like I, I thought it was kind of generic and boring but I, I do recognize that my opinion there is probably a matter of taste more than than a something that would lead to a recommendation I would still say if you want to play a first-person shooter with psychic powers that feels kind of like if you were a super powerful force unleashed Jedi character then uh, control might still be it for you uh, but do recognize that you're going to be fighting the exact same enemy in the exact same building for the entirety of the game and it's going to get pretty repetitive uh, let's see moving on we have a Komatsu article here uh, Taisho X Alice Episode 1 for PC is coming to the West uh, November 28th. New localization dated following the fumbled release in 2017. Looks like it is um, a. It's an Otome Young Maiden visual novel. Okay. So. There's a Steam page. Looks. I'll take a look at that. See if it's tagged with any nudity or anything. No. This probably is an Alice in Wonderland reference by the looks of it. And it is kind of a different art style. Yep. Yep. So, if that is a game you recognize. just lose here. It's kind of a nice idea though to, to see translations, localizations, other efforts be redone instead of instead of people just putting out like low effort translations for visual novels. Uh, that's not really going to get most people who don't play visual novels to play visual novels, but um, it's not gonna hurt, certainly. Man, I don't even have like the daily quest done. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, until you start getting into like full voice acting, which they can't afford to do, and and more live 2D animation to make it feel more alive. Uh, I think you're just gonna constantly run into trouble with trying to get a large percentage of the casual or western video game playing market to want to play any visual novels which isn't surprising so now we're back to my black deck which is the only deck I've 
manage to figure out how to play because it's probably stupid simple too. It's just relatively strong characters that that semi drives pretty well. Um, there's really not a lot else going on here. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article here, Steam su Search Suggestions. Steam Search Suggestions and Premium Positioning, which is just a blog post, probably just promoting search engine optimization and talking about how if your game is at the top of the search, um, search list, it's more likely to be seen and played and reviewed. Uh, a major point I would point here without actually reading this article though is that if these companies would stop using simplistic single word names like control or echo or or what what was another one um, oh, there's so many doom even like if they would just start naming their games something more, put a subtitle on it, something something easier to, to differentiate your game, it makes it a lot less likely that some other game is going to come out and, and put out a game that's the exact same name. Alright, well... Can I afford this? I don't think I can. So we'll just choose with, to go with no attacks. Uh, Gamatsu has Diablo 4, a Shaiva boss battle the gameplay. Again, Activision Blizzard, remember just open that folder. Reasons why you should be boycotting Activision Blizzard. Um, what looks interesting here is it does seem like this is a rather large creature for a Diablo game since this is your character and that dragon seems to be very very big uh, so they might be trying to scale it up a little bit but uh, you'd almost want the camera to zoom out in this boss battle and then zoom back in later on um, At the end of the day, though, uh, here we can kind of show off what the inventory is going to look like. Let's jump back there a little bit. You've still got a limited inventory. you still got the same kind of things that you put on the character. It's still just the same game, and there's really not stopping anybody from making a better... Uh, just making a better Diablo clone and a bit better real-time strategy uh, top-down RPG game loot let's see next we have a game on Steam here called Swordia which looks like it is a low-effort asset flip well I was gonna say it was an MMO RPG but from the looks of it it looks more like it's a top-down Player versus player RPG. Early access free to play. They're calling it an MMO player versus play. player game. That's total garbage. And I'm just taking damage like crazy because I don't have enough mana. And potentially I'm going to lose before I can do anything more. See, next we have a game on Steam here called Soko Loco Deluxe, which looks like it's a train building kind of puzzle game. The graphics don't look good enough to interest me. $8.99 English only. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not seeing anything good enough there. If anything, I'm more and more starting to to feel like I've I've been way too generous and I've let a lot of other um, a lot of other garbage 
on the fall list and next time I do a fall list cleanup I'm gonna regret it. Um, Gamato has an article here, Trials of Mana details characters, classes, prologues, and map mechanics for the PC, PS4, and Switch. Which, okay. Yeah, we really don't need a lot to, to learn about Trials of Mana until it's out and reviewed as the next of, of the Mana series. No. The, this animation style and this character design style. I'd say the character design style more than the animation style does kind of scream a very unique weird drawing style character design style from what feels like something from the 70s even not even the 80s uh, which might be exactly accurate because they are probably taking a lot of cues from the previous mana game and I could keep scrolling here but we can see this page is actually halfway done so I'm just gonna take an opportunity to, to not go any further down that path because it's just gonna show like more images of more characters you can seek out this article if you want and there is a slight danger that one of the screenshots might be a little bit too spicy for YouTube Although I doubt it. It's, it's actually, I just scrolled down all the way. It didn't look like there was anything too spicy. Um, Open Critic has the same story. New Overwatch event can net players a new Mercy skin. If you want to read that. Um, they are kind of in a weird position where... Um, They're, they're in a weird position because the announcement of Overwatch 2 has happened. So you've got to keep people interested now in playing Overwatch 1. Otherwise, nobody's ever going to uh, be. There's going to be no audience to play Overwatch 2 <laughs> when it comes out. Uh, Open Critic has an article here, exclusive apparently. Google Stadia achievements will unlock retroactively once they're implemented. Uh, weird that Open Critic is get doing any news articles. Even weirder that they're now getting exclusives. It, it's strange to say the least, because it does feel like we are quickly running into a scenario where Open Critic is just becoming the next IGN, as IGN and other. Uh, other people are fought, failing and falling apart. Uh, Kotaku, for instance, a great example. All right, so what do I want to do? Do I want to attack or do I want to just try and defend? Um, Open Critic has another article here. Pokemon Sword and Shield launch event has been cancelled. Is there a reason? Choco this Friday. Your corpse will make an excellent minion. <sighs> Let's reduce the Due to, to operational shambles. reasons, is what they said. Um, there's some very big weirdness happening, I would say, in the Pokemon Sword and Shield <laughs> Pokemon fan community. Uh, because on Reddit, I'm seeing people people say, thank you, Game Freak, thank you, thank you for, for your tireless efforts. And then, I, and that sounds like there's a lot of just propaganda being posted by Nintendo and Game Freak directly. It sounds like a bunch of BS, because I don't know why anybody would be happy with Game Freak or Pokemon Sword and Shield, as we learn less and less work and effort was put into it including the fact that the 3D meshes are just from the old games too, so... So they basically lied when said when they cut the national Pokedex uh, by saying that they had to make 3D, new 3D models for, for all the new characters, or the, the characters that were being, coming over. Uh, it is just a small headache. This guy is wrecking me. I'm 
totally getting wrecked here. Um, so if I was to to guess the true feelings amongst most Pokemon players, if you exclude people who are actually autistic or approaching autism and, and will always love Pokemon no matter what, I think the true feelings are that they are very disappointed in what has been said as far as what Pokemon Sword and Shield will be. Now, we have to kind of wait till there are some reviews out there to be certain because there might be something there. But there's, for instance, a apparently no volume control settings until you buy an object that they don't tell you you have to buy this object and use it inside the game to control the volume. Now, if that was a secondary feature and you got this object for free and it controlled the volume in the game, that'd be fine. Uh, but there's really no reason to do it that way. There should just be something in the pause menu. The idea that... Uh, remember, this is a kid's game, too. The idea that a parent would tell their kid to turn down the volume on their game and they wouldn't be able to do it uh, in an effective manner, at the very least, uh, because they don't have that object is completely wrong. Like, that, that totally should not be allowed. Uh, and yet, that's what they're doing. Uh, there's probably a whole laundry list if I was, if I even cared about Pokemon more that I could complain about that it seems like it's just being done in a very bad manner. Almost to the point where I, I it suspiciously looks like Game Freak is a, trying to poison the well and ruin Pokemon so that people will play their other game that's not a Nintendo Pokemon game, which if that's the case, then that's that's not a good way to run your business, to say the least. Disappointing little kids. It's no way to run a business. Um, moving on. Uh, Magic Arena State of the Game November 2019 is out. So, in progress is fixing gameplay hitches, first pers frames per second drops, and unresponsiveness. Memory allocation management uh, and crashes are all being worked on, thank goodness, but we'll see how much improvement happens. Social features 1.0, friends lists are being added. Um, let's see. Is Magic Arena beyond standard? Recently there's been a lot of discussion about what MTG Arena is ultimately to be as a game to both help current conversations and lend context to the path ahead. We want to talk about our goals for MTG Arena and what this means for players as we begin to look beyond standard. MTG Arena is a gateway to magic. We want Arena to be the definitive way for new and old players alike to jump into magic whenever they want, which means they want you to get into paper magic, which probably makes them way more money uh, hmm. one second as I'm drinking water uh, MTG Arena is diving into Magic's history we plan to bring more of Magic's history into MG Arena through historic and set remasters. Uh, good, because if you don't do that, then it, your game is going to completely fail. Uh, but it is kind of a little disingenuous and disbelievable uh, at the moment to say that, because they've already said that they're uh, not looking to do Pioneer, which would be the way of maintaining old sets of recent history. So if MTG Arena was just, you can play the newest sets in Standard, and then you could play like Alpha sets and Ice Age sets and really, really old sets, but 
there's several years gap in the middle of sets that they just won't let you play. That's not going to work for many people. That's, that would be crazy. Like, and the idea that they would start at like the very first magic sets and then try and catch up makes a lot less sense than if they would just go backwards one set uh, each, each expansion each month. Uh, and there kind of needs to be an acceleration. They, they kind of needed this game to come out of beta, having every card ready to go, e even if even if it was just in a way that you could see the cards and you couldn't even play them because they were there was just a long list of banned cards that they were gonna bring out of being banned, which would be a crazy way to do things. But um, if you could just display them. If that, if you just started with that, if you just had a text list of, here's the here's the cards that that at some point in the future might might be playable again in some reprint uh, due to a reprint or something. Let's see. Yeah, I don't care if that's blocked. It's just card and attack. Uh, MTG Arena is a digital frontier. It's a new way to experiment with magic and expand this possibility, especially in the digital space. I hope they do a lot of that because eventually they need to realize that the way forward is to abandon the paper magic uh, completely. Like, not now, not five years from now, maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years ago from now. But eventually, though, selling paper cards in a store in a future where stores may not even exist is is going to be very very hard um, they've already hit a point that I don't think most people would recognize is that you don't buy magic cards in grocery stores you don't maybe you can get them inside of a Target or a Walmart but I bet you'd have a hard time even getting them there um, if they are somewhere in a Walmart, they're, they're in one shelf that you probably don't walk by very often. Uh, toy stores and stores in general are gone. Uh, magic cars in particular, easy to shoplift and and so uh, not included in a lot of store stores lineups and a lot of toy stores in general. Uh, when Toys R Us was a thing, I don't recall ever really seeing magic cards prominent or anywhere. Uh, so as we're losing more and more toy stores in general, they, they can't stick with the paper. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point there's a law passed that says some of this frivolous products that are, you know, wasting paper, wasting cardboard, killing trees, uh, using, using ink up. Uh, some of these frivolous projects might uh, products might just be made illegal and you look at plastic straws and how they're being banned in California I could easily see California saying we're banning all cardboard cards like the, their waste like and then that leaves Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast with only being able to make money digitally so they need to have a platform here that people want to play and it takes advantage of their many decades of previous artwork and card design, uh, which they don't have that right now. Here, I just need to put this in auto passing mode. Uh, the next category is event curation. It says at a high level, all this means is MTG Arena will feel more like your local game store, running a variety of organized events throughout the week. Uh, MTG Arena is a lifestyle game, not just a sometimes activity for most of our players. Uh, I think that is the wrong audience to target, because you've already got that audience. Um, and I think that audience in particular is not not the audience that you should bet on anyways um, because again you've already got that audience um, uh, 
next paragraph is remastered sets. Later next year, we plan to begin adding remastered versions of the older sets of Magic the Gathering. Uh, the MTG Arena, in conjunction with Magic R&D, will be looking at multiple sets and condensing them into a single larger set that only includes the most relevant cards and adding that to the game. This will allow us to focus on what made these sets fun and exciting for players while delivering on the content much more quickly. This is a long-term commitment that will eventually lead to an additional format support beyond standard and historic. Pioneer is one of the formats that we're working towards, but it'll be a longer journey before we can talk specifics. As we head towards our goal, we'll be focusing on delivering the best play experience that these iconic card sets can offer. Which is interesting because I had heard that they weren't going to do Pioneer at all. Um, apparently they got enough backlash from that 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 was no longer a viable option. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to win here. Um, next paragraph is historic. We want to leverage MTG's arena's digital strengths to create a format that can adapt more quickly to what's going on in-game. Historic is our first take on this, aimed at more experienced players. We want to seriously explore the idea of a living format that changes as it's played. This truly begins with the November game update when we'll be adding 20 new cards to MTG for historic play. They come alongside best of the one historic launch event and a best of three ranked few. Uh, experimental events is the next par paragraph. Uh, we'll always experiment with new types of events and formats and, and we always will. Soon, let's see, how's this going to work? Stop that guy. Definitely. Block that guy. Definitely. And then... Block that guy. Definitely. Could attack here, but then I couldn't block. Um, some some have turned out to be very popular players. Omniscient draft, standard shake up. Others not so much. Double life, Brewer's delight. We're going to keep experiments going and finding more ways to have fun with MTG. And of course, if they're experimenting with these events, and then the events never come back, what what have you really learned? Or how is that helpful in any way? Uh, next paragraph says a uh, digital frontier. Uh, there's understandable concerns at the ideas of doing new things with magic. Luckily, we're working closely with magic R&D and finding what's fun wherever it is. Um, so I don't know if there's anything else in this paragraph worth mentioning. Yeah, might as well say no blocks because it doesn't matter, but whatever. And then the last section is cleanup phase. Uh, friends list in Historic Anthology 1 will be arriving November 21st alongside some new quality of life changes, bug fixes, and continue working on performance improvements. Keep an eye on the status page for full maintenance schedule and follow us at MTG. Arena for the latest info. What they're not doing though is they're not putting out any like codes for free cards and they're not giving out any new cards or anything like that. And, and I'm not really killing. 
other creatures are getting victories. <laughs> and this is with my best deck, which I think is this. I don't think it's this one, but maybe it is this one. Hmm. So a lot of good promises there for MTG update, although in all fairness, maybe I shouldn't have bothered to do read any of that if you don't care although uh, this is the journey you're gonna go on if you're gonna watch these videos at all on my channel is that we're, we're all in with MTG Arena until at least the second dinner game comes out and and then we probably will be all in with the second dinner game uh, in beta um, I don't uh, MTG Arena in particular has a countdown over its head like if the second dinner marvel card game comes out and it surpasses in quality what mtg arena is by the time it comes out i i'm gonna jump to that game and i think a lot of people will probably jump to that game a lot of people from hearthstone in particular but a lot of people from magic online and magic arena um and I, I would be happy to start over and fresh with fewer cards and more of a kid focus and more of a simplified experience instead of the long history that Magic has and has to play up to. Uh, moving on, we're going to go late here. We have a game called It's Raining Fists in Metal, which looks like it's a player versus player Smash Brothers clone. Early access is discounted to five dollars and fifty nine cents. English full audio with a bunch of other language support. It, the fact that it is player versus player, though, means it's not a game that I'd ever play. And there's far too many Smash Brother clones on Steam um, compared to the amount of quality that there are in this. Uh, next, we have a game on Steam here called The Legend of Arcadiu, which Seems to have some lewd anime characters in it, but it's not tagged with any like nudity or any of that stuff. Um, Four dollars and nineteen cents, English only. It says five different girls RPG parody comedy. Yeah, it doesn't really look like there's um, didn't really look like there's much here. It does seem like it is kind of a just lewd game for lewdness sake because it knows it's not good. Let's see if TechRaptor wants to load. We have an article here. The Witcher Netflix Season 2 announced before the first season has even announced, aired. Um, not super surprising there. Uh, Netflix is pretty fast and loose with giving shows a first season and then a second season and then a third season it's after the third season that they start losing a lot of their um audience and retention it seems so it it really becomes the case of netflix has shifted what a season is into being the first three seasons but then also in fairness sometimes the netflix season is only like six or so episodes so if the witcher really is only six episodes instead of saying 12 episodes or 26 episodes for a season being given a second season doesn't mean anything at all i mean that's exactly what they did with the castlevania series is that the first season was barely a prequel to the second season and it wasn't until you watched all of the first and second season that you felt like you had had a satisfactory journey um, and if they are going to make a third season there it's going to it's going to feel like that is an actual continuation uh gamato has an article here shinmu 3 launch trailer is out again shinmu 3 doing a lot of shady stuff with the epic store and uh and like doing a bait and switch and not giving steam keys even though they promised steam keys and and being really jerks about it uh, i don't think that there's a lot of good reason why a casual person should play shinmu 3 now if you're chomping at the bit and you kickstarted it you're probably going to get the game on the epic store anyway so you've probably been suckered and so i just take would say take the lesson to not kickstart and support games 
Uh, but otherwise, you know, I, I can't blame you if you already paid for the game, if you play it. I would say, though, if you are a huge Shinmu fan and didn't buy the game or kickstart it, you probably shouldn't, just as a boycott. And this is really where it's getting down to the point where I'm going to have to start maintaining a list of controversies, because Shinmu's controversy kind of pales in comparison to the Activision Blizzard controversies, and so maybe now it doesn't really matter that much. I would say, at the very least, try to stay out of the first six months the launch window, six to twelve month launch window, when buying these games. Uh, if you're going to buy them, get them, get them a year later, get them on sale. That way, they can have to report at least one or two quarters in which their sales are lower than what they expected due to their own actions. And so maybe they'll learn from that lesson. Probably not, but maybe. Next, we have a game on Steam here called D20 Dungeons, which I would say looks a lot more like Heroes Quest than um, than Dungeons and Dragons. But any kind of game like this has so much numbers and so much text; and it's it's not particularly interesting or good looking. Uh, it wouldn't be particularly fun to play this on a computer. It's early access, $12.74 discounted English only, and single player only, which really drops the ball on what a game like this should be. If you're not playing a board game like this with your friends, at least four other players, uh, you're wasting your life, <laughs> I would say. We may have already talked about this, but I don't know if I showed off the images. So TechRaptor, We Happy Fuse Final DLC comes out next week. We all fall down. Uh, put you in the role of Victoria Bing. Uh, taking more of an action focus, you'll be able to live through the final days of Wellington Wells as it goes through the shortage of joy. So it seems like it is straight up going to be like a zombie post-apocalyptic DLC with more action. Which honestly might be the better way to approach the, the mess that is We Happy Few. Um, but yeah, you kind of know that they are not going to ever make a We Happy Few 2 or fix the game in a way where most people would want to play it and enjoy it. Next, we have a game on Steam called Disc Golf Adventure VR. Um, the graphics don't look quite good enough, I don't think, to make me want to play it. Uh, flinging things with the VR controllers is kind of crazy. And honestly, in all fairness, why not just go play Disc Golf for real? Like, why are you doing this in your house? Why, why are you being antisocial playing disc golf on a VR headset, $600 VR headset, plus $10 for this game, which that price isn't terrible, but, like, this doesn't make sense at all. Even if you're, unless you're just incredibly disabled, you should be able to do everything that you do playing disc golf and VR in the real world. You're standing up, you're swinging your arm. There, there's no difference between that. Unlike like Wii Bowling, which was, I imagine, very helpful for people who couldn't actually lift a bowling ball but liked to bowl, um, lifting a frisbee is nothing. Uh, it, it would be the equivalent of the weight of a Wiimote. So, yeah, I have no idea who, why they thought that would be a sellable product. Next, we have a game on Steam called The Refuge. I'm going to try and burn through all the games today. This looks like a GTA clone asset flip game with dark screenshot syndrome. I haven't had to say that today. $11.99 with a third party EULA. Yeah, nothing there of interest. And of course, Magic is having troubles. The thing here about reading all of the updates that are coming in to Magic Arena too, they did not mention one bit about wait time. And that's the thing that should have been improved and focused on this because I am seeing tons of this happen. 
Next, we have a game on Steam called Jumanji the Video Game, which... Okay, so the new Jumanji movie starring The Rock uh, has the kids going inside a video game. So now it's gone full circle, and here's a video game version of a movie about kids going inside a video game. I guess Jack Black is also starring in this, in the movie. I, I think kind of all the characters actors are kind of famous they, they they did get quite the quattro of famous actors the animation here looks terrible though and this is $39.99 for a movie tie-in game I'm gonna put this on the fall list but almost certainly it won't ever get enough reviews to justify purchasing it it's not like that movie was super successful it has multiplayer and pvp so hmm i really need to see a review on this just to make sure this isn't this game is bad don't buy it it runs bad it plays bad it's not worth five five pounds let alone 35 pounds played with my son for about an hour but it was crashing return for a full rerun re refund this person got it for free, so they're happy with it. Alright, well, I think that's all we need to know. Take that off the follow list. <laughs> Will we ever get a good game with Storing the Rock? You'd think there'd be a whole collection of Fast and Furious video games out there, but I guess it's just easier to make a racing game and not buy the license to the Fast and Furious series. Um, next, we have a game on Steam here called Skateria, which... It says it's a post-apocalyptic shooter, but it looks to me like it's a post-apocalyptic Terraria game. Hmm. And yeah, I don't think I have any interest in playing Terraria, let alone a clone of Terraria. Early access, $7.99, English only. Multiplayer, player versus player only. Lots of reasons why this isn't going on the fall list. Let's see, we have about... 10 more games so let's just burn through these uh, we have whispered secrets dreadful beauty collectors edition in a big fish game hidden object game selling for $12.59 discounted yep they are all the same they are just always the exact same game with slightly different arts, slightly different story, but that is pretty much it. Same gameplay, same puzzles, same concept. Next we have a game called Radish, which looks like it's probably an asset flip first person shooter game. Yeah, looks like they just bought a bunch of crazy assets to make it a crazy game. $2.39 discounted English full audio it claims. That's too cheap, honestly, for a first-person shooter. Um, so you can use the price sometimes to recognize that the game's not quality. Uh, let's see. Next, we have a game on Steam called Somewhere Inside, which is another 3D dungeon crawler game. Um, or a horror game inside of a 3D dungeon. Hmm. Is there actually any gameplay here? Because I'm not seeing a weapon or anything in your hands. So it seems like you're probably just getting chased. So it looks like it's run away. Uh, yeah, there's no health bar. There's no weapons. There's no pickups. Nothing being depicted at all like that. So 79 cents discounted. They say this is like... Uh, I'm getting recommended this because I played Borderlands 2. It says it's multiplayer p player versus player. I question that. Yep. This is a garbage game trying to show, show itself like it is in a garbage game. Which I have to applaud games that even bother to do that these days. Next we have Ubermash Omega, which this is like the fifth or sixth Ubermash game that's been released. And people seem to like it, but every time I look at any of them, they look incredibly busy visually. And like they just move way too fast uh, as a top-down twin-stick shooter. 
I, I guess if you are at the top tier of top down twin stick shooters or maybe it has a great soundtrack it does is tag great soundtrack maybe you like the feel of this but every time i look at any of these games in this series it's just like no uh, uh, too much neon too much blood on the floor too much visual garbage and, and clutter and noise four dollars and 49 cents discounted six achievements english full audio there's a whole collection of ubermash games for 17.99 if you're interested i'm just not Let's see next we have a game on steam here called detective jackie mystic case which looks like a mobile game that's been ported if i was to guess um boy does this look like a mobile game to me but could it possibly be that there is actually a good mobile game here honestly this looks kind of like one of those pregnant Elsa uh, tricking kids into playing games twelve dollars and ninety nine cents let's look at the reviews clicker plus crime plus mythology hmm. I'm gonna put this on the follow list but I am certainly uncertain about this. It, it looks like it's a mobile port of something that's super weird. But did they do something with it to make this really work? Or did they just optimize this game so it looks like it's something people would want to play? Uh, who, uh, who knows? We'll wait for some reviews. Let's see. Next, we have a game that's all Asian characters. It looks like it's a free to play RPG style game with some lewd anime girl figurines. Hmm. Early access, English was not supported, Chinese only. So, yep. Hmm can't really say much more than that it just looks like a regular Chinese game although in all fairness we we didn't see a lot of chain Chinese games come out today although again maybe that's because of what's on Steam has been done I don't think I did see any new games come out today when I looked at my Twitter feed so we, we may have missed some games but that's fine that gives us something to catch up on on Friday next we have a game on Steam called Superverse which Looks like a space flying around shooting each other game. Yeah. Doesn't look particularly interesting to me. Early access, $24.99 English only. That is way too expensive. And is it single player only, too? <coughs> Three more games to go through. see next we have a game on steam called no offense comma but which probably is a troll game hmm. turn-based strategy game set in regency england this is probably a clone of the game the card game regency i think is the name of it um you must build a reputation for yourself by attending a series of dinner parties and insulting other guests until they break down and leave. $4.99 English only. Yeah, I think this is a direct clone of a card game that actually exists. Uh, maybe it's not called Regency, maybe it's called something else, but, but it doesn't look good enough to interest me to make me want to play a digital version of it next we have another Chinese game here I imagine that's just an infinite runner so there's not too much that needs to be said there it looks like it may have some other modes but clearly it's just an infinite runner mobile port uh, $69.99 Chinese only at that point at that price point you know that this company is either just making up a number or 
they are laundering stolen credit card my, stolen credit cards through their games uh, which like YouTube having to comply with COPA if there was some laws that came down saying hey Steam you can't let so many of these foreign companies uh, list games for ridiculous prices and buy games with stolen credit cards so much but I, I think Steam already is kind of handling that because they're refunding the stolen credit cards and um, and that kind of changes the situation. Uh, here's that game, Stay Cool, Kobayashi San, a River City Ransom story. This is like the fifth or sixth River City Ransom spinoff game that's come out this year. Um, I don't know why they decided to make so many so quickly. I'll put it on the fall list, but doesn't sound like it's particularly that good. $13.99, full Japanese with other language supports, uh, English and other Asian languages. Yeah, I don't see how even a major River City Ransom fan was that big of a fan that they wanted five or six released in the same day, same year. And that brings me to the Humble Bundle store, which they've got a, what is Mona Goddard? I've heard that word. They have a book bundle of the Mona Goddard supernatural, supernatural light novels, not the WB TV series. Um, I suppose I could show this. Yeah. So, some kind of light novel series has, I assume, been translated to English. Even though it looks like you're getting the Japanese art covers. Hmm. I've heard of this series, but I don't... I don't know why it would be particularly popular enough to deserve its own... It's own humble bundle, but whatever. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund and the ACLU almost makes me wonder if maybe the Mona Goddard book series has been um, banned on some kind of point and the ACLU is making a, a statement here. Um, if you want to learn how to program with the Unreal Engine, there's an Unreal Engine Mix Bundle that includes a couple of games and a bunch of assets and training courses. Although I don't know if any of the Humble Bundle training courses would be the right ones to go with. Is there an actual games bundle though? No, there's no Humble Bundle for games out right now. So I imagine maybe Black Friday is getting in the way of the release of a lot of games in particular. Uh, Supergiant Games is looking for an engine programmer. I'll just mention it and not even open up that page for Friday. Oculus and Unity team up for free courses on VR game development. According to Gamatsu. Hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe there was nothing that really came out on Steam, or maybe it, this is a case of them, them just trying to get away from the Star Wars release. Let's see. And, and I'm just scrolling down my Twitter feed to... Gamma Sutra has a... The Binding of Isaac postmortem article, which might be interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Gamma Sutra has a video how Teclan built a Dying Light's remarkable parkour system. Gamma Sutra has Tencent's online game revenue surpasses four billion in quarter three. These are short things. 
I'll actually talk about that article Friday. Let's see. Overwatch lawsuit in China won by Blizzard and NetEase, probably because the other company was literally just stealing and cloning Overwatch. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think any game has come out according to what's on Steam thing. There's one three hours ago. Yeah. And it's such a bad game that I'm skipping it anyways. I did see a new handheld Raspberry Pi emulating emulation Game Boy clone type thing. Um, but it seems like it's hard to find. It uses the Raspberry Pi compute module, which is cool if they ever make a Raspberry Pi 4 compute module, uh, which they haven't yet. And, um, and, and then it would be backward compatible. Uh, or or the hardware would be compatible but the other problem with the hardware is while it is very nice it's like two hundred dollars and or more like it the price seems to wildly vary so i would say the retro pi game boy case which is only seventy dollars and then you have to put a raspberry pi zero in it or you or, or equivalent a clone of the raspberry pi zero might be a better move um, that that would be much more reasonable to spend at seventy dollars than paying two hundred plus dollars for just the the case. I, maybe it comes with the compute module. Even if it does, it doesn't. That doesn't affect the calculation. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box one of these days we'll get back to doing three streams uh, clearly the second recording is always going like 30 minutes longer anyways um, thank you for watching have a good evening